Hey again guys, how's everybody doing? Um, welcome back and today we're going to continue on our trend with uh, the hand mixers that we got going on here. Um, this is a Sunbeam, it's Mixmaster Junior, it's the chrome model, um, probably 1950s. Um, we've got also another one to do this like this only it's yellow, but both of these are just basically maintenance. Um, I was told to leave the cords on these, being that they're the original cords. Um, I get this done for you. See, it's the original cord. It says Sunbeam right on it, and apparently they run slow, which is you know really no surprise given that they're their age and they probably never had any maintenance. Let me just plug this one in. Let's see what this one sounds like. Alright, that's on high, medium, and low, it doesn't even turn. And I think for anybody that's that's watched uh, any number of my videos here, um, you can probably guess what the cause of that is. But we're going to open it up and find out for sure, and take care of the issue. You guys are taking a guess. Um, interesting to see if you guys are correct. Get a gearbox off here. If you get dragged, I'm not so sure it's all coming from here. This one right here does have some drag on it, but it's not significant. I would think the motor would still be able to turn that. But you feel a lot more drag on the motor itself. So my first guess would have been um, beater shafts as well, but it's more likely just dragging the uh, bushing here. So we're gonna find out. Let's get a gasket off here. Scoop some of the grease out from around these nuts. It's got a nice layer of grease on them as well. We'll be cleaning up all this old grease on here. See if we can 
get this to come loose. Alright, as you see, it's more, way more freewheeling now. That does lead me to believe it was a little hung up on that bushing there. Alright, we're going to dig in a little further on here. Um, we've got to basically um, pull this whole assembly out in here. that you see right here. Double nut this shaft here, this seems to be pretty much the easiest way to get these out. Especially you know, when you try not to damage the threads you know, on your threaded rods here. Try to slide this entire thing out in one complete assembly. Okay, armature's out. This is what's wanting to hold up, pulling this out. I mean, normally on these I would have cut the cord at this point to make this a little easier to get out. got here on this one. Now if we get get it past the part that's bunched up on there, we should be able to pull this through without much effort at all. And you can see there's a part of the cord that's wanting to peel back. I mean this cord is 
probably not in the best shape. But we do, uh, you know, we do have an obligation to to do what the customer wants here and and save this with the cord. Um, I mean, there's a good chance that it may not be used, so safety is really not an issue. Um, it may be, uh, you know, it may just be for lux. side of the cord here. You know, the insulation doesn't look bad. Um, it's just, I think, I believe it's just this outer insulation right here, uh, which is just starting to open up a little bit. But everything else looks good on it. And if I look, I don't know if you can see down inside there, it does look like there's plenty of oil down in there on that bushing. But looking at this, it looks like there is a definite, definite ridges on here worn into it. Hopefully this is focusing for you so you can see. Um, this part up here was dry. So, but we can go through, we, now we can get everything all cleaned up, uh, take these ridges out on there, and uh, just get some fresh oil on everything. So as soon as we get these parts all cleaned up, I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, we've got everything cleaned up now, and uh, basically what I ended up doing was cutting about an inch and a half off this cord uh, to get past that bad part on the outer coating there. And I noticed uh, on the black, I mean, it was there were some cracks in it, as you can see right here. Um, I, I ended up putting a piece of heat shrink tubing on that, and we've got our uh, retainer, or you know, cord re restraint back in here to keep from popping out. And I put a, uh, I put a uh, piece of. Um, heat shrink over that as well um, just to help keep everything together right here and uh, we can go through and we get this put back into place in the inside the body of the machine um, the bushing in there I did use a q-tip and I cleaned out as much of the old oil in there as I could it was uh, basically a pretty sticky um, uh, pretty sticky oil at this point I mean it wasn't it wasn't doing much for lubricating so we're going to get some fresh oil down in that bushing. And we're going to try to get this thing reassembled here. And it's basically a matter of pulling the cord through and getting everything lined up as it goes back together here. Trying to get, you know, your screw holes lined up and keep them that way as you pull this thing. Push and pull pull on the cord and push on the field coil to get everything locked in. Um, we do have a little, little problem with my new connectors I put on here. They may be a little too big. screw hole seems to be a pretty tall task in itself as you're putting this together. Um, you know, you slide it in a little bit and it rotates. Got that back in. 
So now we've got to get our armature back in. And you can see we've got our armature all cleaned up here. Um, I don't know what those ridges were back there, but we took them down, um, polished this up, and got all the, the residue off. We've got oil in our bushing back there. Basically, we just want to stick this in the hole. And now, we want to try to get everything lined up in here for reassembly, including our handle. Now, another tricky part of this is we've got to get our brushes back in here with the springs in the right direction and then push it down over that armature. So we got one brush in. And you know, judged by the, the inside of this thing too, I don't think this one was used that much either. Um, there wasn't there wasn't no carbon buildup in here and the brushes still look good. Uh, it seemed to be just, you know, all an age age related um, issues with this one here. Alright, so now we've got our brushes in where they gotta go. Now we've gotta get everything seated. And that means, you know, screw holes, um, wires, these bolts gotta get threaded in, down into the right spot. Everything's gonna get lined up perfectly here. Okay, another thing I noticed on this one too is this one does have a date on here. Um, on the bottom of the handle here. It says February 9th and then after that it gets kind of blurry. Um, it looks like it might be 1956. Okay, so we've got everything uh, back together inside here. We've got our um, um, brushes set back in there in our in our card. Uh, we've got our nuts snug down here that holds that into place. Um, when you're putting this back together, you just got to be real careful about your wires. Make sure none of your wires get pinched or anything. Um, getting the brushes in there is, is a little difficult, um, but it's doable. Um, there is another way of taking this apart as well, and uh, I will show that to you guys on the, on the next one. Um, more than one way to skin a cat, I suppose. Um, you know, when, the way I pulled everything out of here in, a, in one assembly, there is a, there is an alternative way. Um, but anyways, now that we've got this all together, you can see everything inside here is is uh, finished up. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll put a little oil on this bushing here. And we're gonna get this put on. kind of like so. And before I fasten this down, I'm going to plug this in and just see how it runs. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bump you guys there.
and I, I don't know if you can really hear this or see this. Um, that's on low. That's medium. And of course it's high. Um, sounds like there's a fair amount of arcing in there going on, which which isn't good. Um, and just the heat on the outside of this thing, I mean, it's feeling pretty hot. So we're going to take it apart again, try and figure out what's going on and, and what's causing this. Uh, we'll get it out later. just don't want to get two of them stuck in here. Alright, let's take this bushing plate off again and try to figure out why she's running hot and arcing so bad. Hmm. And let's see, I just pulled the armature out a little bit, so I've got to get that back down. With the armature in there, it looks like it's riding and the brushes are riding in the right spot. And the brushes do seem like they were put back in correctly with the curvature on the right thing. No. You know, in the right spot, facing sideways instead of up and down. I mean, it was, you could hear it arcing, you know, at the brushes. Uh, you know, it, it definitely sounded like quite a bit of arcing, but that doesn't explain how much heat there, I, there is actually built up on the outside casing of this thing. So I'm going to have to look at the armature and fuel coil on here, most likely. Um, Let's just try this one more time now that I reset those pieces there. Let's see what happens. a lot of arcing going on in there, but So I think we're going to have to check the armature. And I think I will show you guys the other way to, to pull this apart without having to pull everything out. These two screws right here on these wires, just take these screws off. down here just loosen them up and then spin them right off and it should unless there's like a 
thread that's got a bugger on it or something, they should, once you loosen them up, be able to spin right off all the way up the threaded rod here. As I say that, I, I hit a tight spot. Okay, so we've got those off. We've got our wires disconnected. And now we want to just carefully pull this up. You know, being careful of our brushes as well. I mean, you got to remember our brushes are are gonna you know want to pop out. All right. Now let's take out our armature. Wow. Yeah, that armature is hot. Let's try and check check our armature and see if there's any bad winding. Let's look at it first and see if we can see any. And I don't see anything. But let's uh, let's go through and check these. So we go here and then directly across from it. We're at 43.3. So if we go to the next one, 43.1. This is ohms, by the way, on the 200 scale. 43.8. Thirty-eight point six. Like I said, I'm not really sure what what the range is supposed to be on here, but okay, right there we've got nothing. And um, this one we've got nothing. It appears that we've got a bad armature. So, I'm going to go look on the parts and see if I've got another one. Okay, found another armature here in the parts bin. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw me testing it or I just realized my camera wasn't really pointed all that low. Um, this one right here didn't really test too well. So we've got this one here, and we're going to go through and we're going to test this one, make sure it's good, and we'll see what our readings are on this one. Okay, I'm not quite right on it here. It's hard to do just laying down here like this, but okay, we're at 18.2 and I'm not sure what the you know what the reading is supposed to be on here I know you're supposed to have some resistance across the terminals on here Okay, 
18.2 and maybe back to the beginning here 18.2 yeah, I think we may have hit them all. Eighteen one. We'll just check a few more just to be safe. Eighteen one. But as you see, every one of them has a reading across it there. So we're gonna put this armature in there and see how it does. Alright, give me a minute, I'm going to get this one polished up, move this one out of the way so we don't accidentally put that in. I'm going to get this one polished up and then we'll go ahead and get it in. Alright, I'm going to take our washers off the old one, put them on here, and we'll get a little lube on our shaft here, and we'll stick it down in the hole. this back on and get our brushes set on this armature. Now sometimes I think, you know, just throw a piece of tape on here or something would uh, would help, but with my luck it would be a fight to get that tape off. See, this is going back on easier than it came off, which is good. Alright, so we've got that on. And set all the way down into place. So let's put our nuts back on here. Back. Okay, so we got our nuts back down, we've got our wires reattached. Um, get a little bit more oil on our bush in here. Let's throw this back on and give it a test here. Let's see if replacing that made any difference. definitely a bad armature. So now that we've got that replaced, we can go ahead and finish putting this thing back together now. Uh, now that we've found the issue and, and took care of it, um, we've got to put our fan back on here. That was uh, actually what I was starting to suspect when I realized how hot this machine was running because I know when the armatures go bad, I don't know if it's due to the arcing or what, but they do seem to run extremely hot. and. Uh, Obviously the readings on the rest of it was a little too high. They were about 30 something compared to 18 on this one um, ohms. So um, this one obviously you can tell it runs much better. So this is the way that it's supposed to run. So let's go ahead and get everything reattached here. And we'll get our gearbox put together. And I still got a not stuck up in here. Then I've got to figure out how to get out. Okay. Screwdriver. This thing's got a pretty strong magnet in it. There. Not strong enough. 
just catch it by a couple threads so it don't get sucked back up in here. In, make sure that's still working after tightening everything up. Alright. There, I like the sound of that now. That sounds way better. Alright, we got our shafts cleaned up, we got our gears cleaned up, our gearbox all cleaned up. Now it's just a matter of putting it all together. Put some oil on here. Put our washer on. fingers down in there. Alright. Get the towel out of there. Yeah, this is a tough, uh, tough hole to get down into here, too. This to go down onto the shaft here. There we go. gears they do look like uh, just a smaller version of the ones that are in the larger mix masters they got the same set screws as well but this um, the shaft does not this yeah this shaft does not seem to be seated all the way on there what that's about. Well, let me take these apart and swap them. I didn't think these shafts had a left and right, but it's possible. They're not marked in any way.
Looks like the bushing is coming down a little bit. Alright, we're going to fix that. Just have to drive it down a bit. Just to make it flush. There we go. At least I know it wasn't another issue that we had to uh, deal with. Not sure what would have made that come loose like that, but it fits much better now. Sorry if this has turned into a long video. I mean, I'm going to, of course, you know, by the time you guys see it, there'll be a lot of crap edited out. Um, just to make it watchable, but I'll try and leave a lot of like the diagnostic stuff in here. Yeah, just because I think some of you might find that interesting, and I'm sure the owner is gonna really find that interesting. And that's like the main reason why you know I post these videos up, anyways, is for the owners, but. I do try to do them in kind of like a how-to fashion for the rest of you guys that, you know, have these and, and want to work on them. Um, give you an idea of what to expect. And then maybe help you out along when you get stuck in, on certain parts. I mean, I've gotten pretty good feedback from you guys about it, too, and I do appreciate that. I appreciate all the feedback that I've gotten. And I do appreciate... You know, those of you that, that send stuff in to get work on and, and specifically ask for a video. Okay, let's get this greased up here. So we don't have to pack this thing full, but we do want to make sure that we have enough to keep everything lubricated and to get on all the teeth of these gears. And we got that gear pretty much covered. Get some more here for this gear. and some on that one. I'm sure it will pick it up, you know, just run in the mixer, but we'll have to make sure that we start out with some grease on it. There we go. Alright. There's a decent amount. Ah. Alright. Let's put the gasket on our mixer here. Yeah, and there is an up and down on there. You'll know if you put it on there and it doesn't look right. Just flip it over. Um, all right, I'm going to grab a couple beaters for this. All right, so just keep in mind these beaters do come from the parts bin. This one's broken, but... They still work great when it comes to setting the timing. And on these, I mean, you almost need, absolutely need a, a set of beaters, whether they, they work or not. And, you know, like this one doesn't even want to engage. Let me make sure it's the beater. Yeah, okay, it's the beater. Um, because you can set, you can spin these wherever you want, but as you go to put them on the and the armature there, um, it's going to move on you. So, you definitely got to have a way to set the timing. All right. So we've got to get on the handle. And 
and an armature. And make sure that we're all the way on, which we're not. There we go. Alright, so you can see Okay, we've got this one all wrapped up now. Um, what we found after uh, after replacing gears and shafts and finding it made no difference, um, we took them out and um, found out that this one right here, if you put just this gear and shaft in, it would uh, bog down when you when you, you screwed the end cap on with the gears and with just this one in it didn't. So we knew the issue was on this side here, but it wasn't anywhere in here. So I started taking a close look at this this bushing plate here and I realized that when it sat in there it would sit in cockeyed kind of like it was machined wrong on the bottom there's a different thickness or something I don't know what the deal was so anyways I just got another one of these uh, from a parts machine cleaned it up good um, pulled this out and of course oiled this up and everything um, put that in there and now it runs perfect so let's go ahead and fire it up for you guys so you guys can hear this thing um, what it sounds like now that it's finished I'm sorry for shaking you around there There's low, there's medium, and there's high. And I mean, if you can hear a little rattling of the heaters, I'll show you what that is here in a second. One of these is broken here, but I, these are perfect for using to get everything timed up. But anyways, um, I hope you guys... Uh, Enjoyed what, what went through. Uh, enjoyed what we went through. Um, you know, trying to diagnose this and find out what the issue was. And uh, glad we were able to figure it out in the end. And I think what happened is, I think uh, this thing has been off for quite a while. And um, just the drag that this here alone put on the motor, which was considerable, because I mean you could really hear it bogged down. Um, I think that basically overheated it. Because, I mean, when it was running, it was getting pretty warm. I mean, hot, I should say. Not warm, hot. Um, and I think that's what burned up that armature in there. And this was the, the armature that we tested and found out it was bad. So, you know, with a new armature and a, and a new bushing plate in here, this thing is good to go now. And it should run good for quite a while. Um, next, we're going to start uh, another one that's just like this, only it's a yellow one. Um, and it doesn't look like it's ever been used. I mean, it's in excellent shape. So you want to stay tuned for that. Um, if you... If you subscribe and uh, click the bell, you'll get notification if you want to see that one. Um, it'll notify you when we post that video up as well. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you like the video, let us know. Um, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.